we're going to be in this relationship for some time. We may as well begin working on this together now. It's not enough to turn me on once in a while. It's not enough for you to turn to me every time you need something. CNN Concatenated is an 18 minute long video that I started in late 2000 uh, when I was working as a graphic designer in Time Magazine. And so uh, my work life uh, was very much involved in news and uh, news media and news broadcasting. And I decided, as I very often do, to try to make part of what my life is part of my work. And um, the idea is very simple. Uh, I recorded hours and hours of uh, footage from uh, CNN and then separated uh, the clips into single words and single sounds uh, and saved them all on a hard drive like a dictionary. And from that dictionary, I created a monologue that's uh, 18 minutes long in which somebody whose relationship to uh, TV and the news is extremely dysfunctional, passive aggressive, but also uh, creative. For me, the important thing is how the work starts. And if uh, we want to call it documentary, uh, then it's because it probably starts in a kind of uh, an encounter and a conversation between uh, myself and somebody else. And I often need this in order to stop my work. It's a trigger. So the borders between what is nominally considered uh, documentary and fiction are, for me, extremely pliant, extremely flexible, and extremely uh, mutable. I've got a doctor's appointment in one hour. OK. What's the difference between you and someone who sits in an airplane? There's no difference between us. We do the same job. But you're not a real pilot. So what? You're not a real journalist. No, no, no. I mean... I know what you mean. You're thinking about bodies and trenches. Rats running around. Mustard gas. World War I. Right? Five Thousand Feet is the Best started as a series of conversations with a 26-year-old man who was a uh, drone sensor operator. He worked for six years in the U.S. Air Force as part of a team of two uh, who control uh, a predator drone. They get up in the morning and they have their cereal and their coffee and then they uh, drive to work. And they go into an office environment that's air conditioned and they sit in front of a computer this kind of activity is very familiar to us. This is uh, something that a lot of us do. And they are involved in um, surveillance and, of course, in combat. He describes his work technically. And, of course, he describes the, the, the kind of state of mind that he has now uh, after six years of working and after quitting his job. And so what the work tries to do is to report back from this kind of meeting, report back from out there in the world, and also to think a little bit about how we can uh, describe a state of mind like this. What this technology represents and probably why it's so seductive is because it allows us to do something that uh, is very implicit to our nature, the, the, the superhuman power to uh, see without being seen, to affect somebody without being present in the place. It's literally to be almost godlike. Watching them as they're smoking from about two to three miles away. You could be following them and they wouldn't hear you nor see you. And um, I'll set the laser um, on a spot. In continuity, we see a middle-aged couple who appear to have lost a son. And what they do is they go about trying to fill that absence by engaging young men, bringing them home, and reliving, recreating uh, moments in their past with, with this young man. Because of the loss that they've experienced and because of the amount of pain uh, that exists between them, they are literally at the verge, at the edge of sanity, I think. They're holding on to their lives, to their normal lives, as desperately as possible. And as they do this, of course, the world around them begins to implode and to crumble a little bit. And I think what these uh, surreal elements do, what these grotesques do, is they, they point to something which is um, 
you know, which is not conscious and is, is not, uh, in a sense, real, but which uh, psychologically uh, tries to go for what these characters are feeling and what's, what, what defines, in this particular case, a trauma. So people who are unable to, to process uh, the experience of loss, to come to a particular kind of what's called in popular uh, culture uh, closure, but people who are not able to function uh, normally, you know, I think that the, the work tries to present a portrait of that. And part of that is, I suppose, the, the, the grotesque and, and, and the surreal. By sheer repetition, you're able to re-experience something that you've seen. And so if I make a particular gesture, if I say a particular sentence, when I repeat it, as a viewer, you are immediately reminded of what's happened before. And you begin to develop a very comparative sense of what has happened and what is happening now. So you may not listen so much uh, to the words, but you might uh, watch you know, the gestures of the people. Uh, you might watch the way that they interact with each other. You might pick up on some more uh, subtle cues that uh, are at the periphery of the picture. And it encourages you to kind of look a little bit more critically and also to think about your own memory of what you remember from what happened previously and how uh, information has changed as it's uh, repeated. We have four small screens scattered in the space, and they act for me as little punctuation marks. We have these little young men almost as uh, appearing as little holes, and they describe this experience. They describe uh, what it is that they see outside of uh, the tank. This was the, the, the main question that I always wanted to ask them. What do you see when you look outside? And um, I ask this of every person I interview. I'm interested in stories that are extremely disrupted and very often nonlinear. And I think this fits perfectly inside a museum or gallery context where people could come in at any time and draw uh, different conclusions about what they're seeing. It doesn't have the same regimented procedural linear experience that uh, a film uh, uh, offers. I think it's more free. I think it's, uh, it's quite a bit more free.